this is now part two. Um, just ignore the whiteboard. We don't need it anymore, but I've just still got it sitting here. So, um, for part two, just because there's quite a lot of information, I wanted to break it up into a couple part series rather than just have like one long hour long video or anything. So, uh, in this part two, I just want to talk about how you actually count your macros. So we spoke about what macros are, calories are, how weight loss works at the very basics of it, of how it works. Um, but I just want to talk about how you then actually go about counting them because it would be an absolute nightmare to have to write down your calories in a book or something like that or to work out your mac I mean write down your macros in a book or work out your macros yourself. As we know, your macros, the main thing we're worrying about right now is your carbs, your fats, and your protein that you are intaking. So, basically, in my opinion, and the way I would like my clients to do it, um, but they can do whatever suits them, especially if they have already got experience counting macros, then whatever suits them is fine. But for someone new, I would recommend going through an app. I just keep looking down at my phone because I have uh, some very basic notes here and I'm going to be showing you the app. So I would recommend to anyone new to this, counting their macros through an app. It just makes it very, very simple. So what you wanna do is there's two main apps that I personally know of. The one that I use is this one here, My Fitness Pal. If you can see. So you want to go into My Fitness Pal. This might be easier if I just hold it up to the camera. We're going to go into My Fitness Pal. And we're just not going to worry about today because I've been doing stuff there, but we'll start look at tomorrow. Okay. So this is My Fitness Pal. As you can see, you've got my calorie goal. I'm currently reverse dieting, so my calories are still low. But I have set up, so I've got my breakfast, snack one, lunch, snack two, dinner, and dessert. So don't worry about entering your exercise. You don't need to worry about that. Just absolutely ignore that because it will adjust your goals. So don't enter your exercise. I never do. Now, when you first get it, it's not going to be set up like this. So what you want to do is you want to create your account and then log in on the website and you can actually change the names of your meals. So just have a play around and change the names on through the website on your laptop to what you want to do. So that's how I like to do it. I like to have uh, breakfast, a snack, lunch, a snack, dinner and I always like to have dessert because I will get cravings and that's when I'm likely to um, go off track if I don't have something saved for before bed for dessert. So you're going to add your stuff in there. When you first go into the app, I want you to go create your account, enter your settings and that, and um, you it's going to give you a recommended um, goal. So don't go by that goal. Uh, if you're my client, I'm going to be giving you macros, so you want to enter your own goals. So we're going to go more, and then we're going to scroll down and go into settings, and then you want to go to uh, profile, and then you'll see units. So you want to click units, and you want to select what you want it in. So depending, you know, if you live in the United States, you want pounds, but if you're living in Australia, you're going to want kilos. You're going to want centimeters in Australia, kilometers for distance, and here especially, you're going to want to select calories. At first, it's going to say kilojoules, and that's going to be confusing. So go calories and adjust whichever other ones you want changed. But mainly, just make sure that's on calories. So then we're going to go back and back again. And there we go. So now, if you look here, you can go into, if you've got the paid version, if you don't, I think you have to do it a little bit differently, but you'll still go to goals. And what you want to do is don't worry about your goal weight, current weight, blah, blah, blah. I do sometimes enter my current weight just as a way of um, tracking it for me. But um, quite often, this is pretty often, that's not my goal weight. <laughs> I'm not even trying to lose weight right now. So, yeah. 
but um, and your activity level does not matter. So then I'm going to go into calorie and macronutrient goals. So what I've done is set it so that I can go by grams. So it may say um, your percentage or whatever, but I like mine to be set by the gram. So I can select how many grams of protein. So say I give you your goal of 145 grams of protein, I want you to have 109 grams of carbs and 40 grams of fat. So that's what you select in there. It will automatically update the calorie goal there. So you have your set goals. You then want to select the tick. And there it shows you. So that would be 32% protein, 42, 32% uh, carbs, 42% protein, and 26% fat. Um, also, it's good for if you're carb cycling. Once you start carb cycling, you could adjust each day's macros. But I'm not carb cycling right now. So, once you've set your goals, you can go to your diary. We're going to go off tomorrow just because I've already ended stuff. And you can enter your foods. So I highly recommend, whoops, I highly recommend that you enter all of your foods the night before so that you know everything you're eating for the next day and it's all stuff that you already have bought and prepared. So if you want to, you can just set up your meals for the whole day and you can have that every day of the week and then the next week you can change it if you like. That's your decision or whether you want to have different stuff each day, that's up to you. But just remember to have your food that you want to have the next day already prepared if you can or unless you've got the time to prepare it the next day and um, have it all set and ready to go is my best tip. So for breakfast, for example, if you were having uh, 50 grams of oats, you go add food and then you're going to type. So you can type in, say I wanted it's Coles brand quick oats, then I would type Coles quick oats and search. So you can see some different ones come up. Um, so there's whole grain ones, but I've just got the plain Coles Quick Oats. So I would select that. You can see there that this, these macros is for 30 grams of oats. But say I'm having 50 grams, I would have one and two thirds of a serving because that would equal 50 grams and it's adjusted my macros. So in 50 grams of these Quick Oats, there would be 27.3 carb. 4.7 fat and 6.3 protein. You then click the tick and tick and there it's entered in. Now you can click up here and it can tell you the percentage but what you want to do is click it so that it tells you the amount of grams. Some of these are only for people with the premium app which is the paid for version please no. So basically that's how you do it. Um, if you're not sure, so try at least initially to always do it when you got the packaging with you. So the night before, you might actually go into your pantry and work out everything you're going to have to enter it in. And when you are selecting it, look on the back of your pack and make sure the amount, so this is for 50 grams, so look at the per 100 gram and make sure that this is half of what on the packet says is per 100 gram. Just make sure it matches up to your packet. Another way you can do it, grabbing this protein bar again is you can go add food and you can select the barcode and you simply scan the food and there you go it's popped up and it says apparently that there is 8.6 carbs correct 13 grams of fat, correct, and 12 grams of protein. And that is correct. So there you go, and you just tick it off. So for example, that could be, I had oats and a protein bar. So that is the best way to enter it. Um, and if you're doing something like a banana, or you're not sure on what's in something, just Google it and try and find out. I find Calorie King is a very reliable website to compare it to, but eventually you'll eat a lot of the same foods 
and um, you'll find what works for you and you'll find them eventually. You'll just, it'll all be in there because you use it all the time. But say you're having banana, sometimes you just have to select a generic one. So banana, 150 grams of banana. I had 100 grams, so I made it two thirds, for example. But sometimes you do just need to make that generic selection. If majority of the time you're using the correct ones, something slightly like this where it's just a generic brand is okay, in my opinion. Now the other app is My Fat Secret. And that is this one here. I don't use this app, so I can't tell you really how it works, but if you wanted to try and use this app, feel free to. Um, I think this one is better for using if you wanted to use a free version. Um, I know a lot of people who do if it fits your macros or flexible dieting using this app. So if you want to check that one out, that is another one you can use. So I just wanted to, just a couple things that could be confusing. When you are hitting your macros, um, basically, if you're prepping for a show, you want to be pretty much right on the money, like maybe one gram out, if that. Like, you want to try and really hit right on that number. But for general weight loss and muscle gaining and general lifestyle for your goals, I would recommend hitting with your carbs and your protein um, anywhere between one to five grams below or above your goal. So just really, yeah, keeping it within that. Like if it can be one, that's really good. And five is pushing it a little bit. So just try five grams absolute maximum out. And the more you do it, you will get better at hitting them. Um, and as for fats, I would say no more than three grams out. Just because there's more calories per fat. So it will put you a lot more out from your goal. Obviously, try your best to hit it on point. But if it's just general weight loss and stuff... You can only do what you're doing. Make sure it's just within the couple of grams. So anywhere between one to five grams of carbs and protein and one to three grams of fats, in my opinion. Now, you might form your own opinion. That's an opinion of thing. <laughs> but the reason um, I then want to go on from this is so up the top, say you're using my fitness pal, it's gonna have a calorie goal. Now you're not gonna worry about hitting that. Don't worry about hitting your calorie goal. You want to go down here and hit uh, this one and have a look that your goals hit there. So, um, basically on this one, you'll see your protein goal, your carb goal, and your fat goal. So, when you look at that, um, when you enter your foods, as long as you're hitting that, that's the main thing. So don't worry about the calories at the top or the overall calories worked out. And the reason for this is just because calories are rounded. So on foods and in my fitness pal and stuff, sometimes they like to round off the calories in something. So then it's not accurate. It could say that you're over or you're under or you're hitting it, but it's not accurate because between the different foods, it's got out. So just worry about hitting your protein, your carbs, and your fats goal. Now, for counting your um, macros, as I said, it's important that you try and have healthier foods and I would prefer to promote my clients to be having healthier foods and not just trying to fit in all crap. Yep, if you can fit in a chocolate bar or something that day, that's fine. Have a chocolate bar. As I said, you don't want foods to be bad or good. You want to be flexible with it. But you don't want to be having that chocolate bar if it means you have to be really hungry for a long amount of time because you put so many calories into that one little chocolate bar rather than having a whole meal that you could have had instead of that chocolate bar that could have been full of vegetables and some meat and whatever else, um, avocado or whatever, that would fill you up a lot more than the chocolate bar. But if you've got enough calories and you feel you can fit it and still full, feel full and enjoy the day of food and whatnot, then feel free to do that. You have to work out what works for you and you will work that out. But I just want to say that you want to make sure that you're eating enough fiber. So when you look here, there's also fiber. So I haven't adjusted the fiber goal. You may be able to do that. 
um, but I always get plenty of fiber because I'm eating plenty of green vegetables which provides a lot of fiber um, and I have a lot of foods that seem to have a lot of fiber in them so that's fine but yeah you just want, don't want to be going over the top you've also got a sugar written there so you don't want your sugar to be crazy I mean if one day it's a bit higher than the other then that's fine but um you just want to make sure you're getting in enough fiber um and you just want to be keeping an eye on like your vitamins and ooh, if you look down there just stuff like that so just making sure you're getting enough vitamin vitamin c um your sodium levels aren't too crazy um as i said sodium's not a huge deal if there's a couple days here and there that it is higher well that's what it is it's not going to be a massive deal but just making sure you're hitting those micronutrients um, for your body one you can look up the amount of uh, different vitamins that you should be getting like what your body should what's healthy for your body and what you need you can look that up if you choose to and you can make sure you hit those numbers if you want to but personally um, I do keep an eye on them I do check on them and have a look um, as long as it's up there and looking pretty good, that's a main thing. And if I'm eating like 90% of my foods are healthy and I'm having lots of vegetables and a little bit of fruit and stuff, then I'm pretty much pretty happy. Because, I mean, most people are happy. A lot of people have a go at people like that for not like having, eating healthy or whatever because macros or flexible dieting can be... Um, unhealthy if you're just trying to fit in a bunch of crap but as long as you are filling your body with mostly healthy foods um, while still having enjoyable foods that is the main thing that is all that I ask from my clients and just keep an eye on that and make sure you are getting enough fiber so um, if you did want to look that up feel free to or you can ask me I will happily tell you but just right now I'm not going to go through what each of the vitamins are and how much you should be having um, and there's a couple of different uh, when you look into how much you should be having well some different places say slight differences but yeah just you want to be getting majority of your foods from healthy stuff um, majority of your macros from healthy foods and I would say that's the main thing and just making sure that you're getting enough fiber. Last of all, I just wanted to quickly touch on how to actually hit your macros. So to go to the exact gram can be hard, right? Um, you shouldn't have to be having one little bite of this or whatever to try and hit it. But what I like to do is I'll calculate my foods for the day. And then at, once I've calculated up the whole day, if I'm low on protein, then I'll just go to one of the meals I've created and I'll increase something that is uh, almost 100% protein. So, for example, chicken is almost 100% protein. So, if you've only got to have like five more grams of protein, well, you can just increase one of your meals a bit of chicken. But if you need more protein than that, then maybe you've got a couple meals of chicken in it and you can increase a little bit at each or you can put it all at one. Maybe you just want, maybe you're 25 grams down in protein. So, you add a protein shake because that is almost all protein. As for carbs, you can have a look at um, the things that are almost all carbs. So that's rounding off your numbers at the end. You just want to adjust the things that are all very dense in that macronutrient. So say your carbs are too low, then say you are having rice with your lunch, which I never have rice, but if you're having rice with your lunch, um, then you can just increase a little bit of rice to make it hit that enough carbs. Um, or... If you're having a sweet potato with your dinner, you can increase the amount of sweet potato with your dinner to make you hit that carb number. Um, other things like rice cakes, so something that's pretty much all carbs. Otherwise, then you've got your fats. So um, if you want to just add some fats and you're already right on your carbs and right on your protein, well, just add like maybe a little bit of oil like cook one of your items in a certain amount of oil that makes you hit that fat or if you have a little bit of carbs and fat still to play with then you might want to just increase some peanut butter or increase some avocado for example so you just need to find what foods are full of what and for a little while it will take playing around with it but in a couple weeks 
uh, you'll be okay and you'll have some go-to foods that you really use so just try and stick it out for a couple weeks I swear it gets easier and at the end of the day if you don't like it anymore you don't have to do this forever just give it a go um, it's just very very beneficial uh, because you can stay on track and live a balanced lifestyle so that's what I like about this like yeah you could be cutting or whatever and you're happy to be on a meal plan but then when you're not cutting anymore and you don't want to be eating off a strict meal plan that someone has given you then what are you going to do you don't really have any understanding of the foods very much because you haven't entered them or anything you've just followed a piece of paper so in your off season if you were prepping for a show or like if you're not cutting anymore you could easily go overboard and gain all that weight back because you don't really know what you're intaking into your body so personally that is why i like flexible dieting it is a very good approach to reaching your goals and having a flexible lifestyle um as i said if you're not comfortable doing it if it fits your macros please feel free to just follow the meal plan that I have done up for you or if you are not one of my clients and you've happened to like I've given you the link to this video or anything like that um, yeah if you're not comfortable with it feel free to follow a meal plan like that's fine but I do highly recommend it I do think it's a really good way for people to learn um, and get a bit of extra information so that they're able to make changes themselves and have an idea of what they're putting in their body and not have to just go completely one way or the other. I really hope that I haven't missed any important information off of this. I have, again, tried to keep it pretty basic because I just didn't want to overload your heads with stuff that you don't overly need to know. I feel like I've gone into enough detail that you can sort of get the ball rolling, um, but not gone too far. So if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments or message me directly. I'm more than happy to answer any of your questions. I really, really want to help people to learn this because I do think it is a handy thing to know uh, and good knowledge to have. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, as I said, any questions, please message me. And I hope this guy's... Uh, <laughs> I hope this helped you guys and I will talk to you in the next video.